scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. I want you to pay attention to what I will be teaching tonight. I truly believe with all my heart like the woman of God um, charged us before I came up um, it matters what we hear because the information here becomes the basis for constructing our belief systems and our understanding about God and about life and we rise and we thrive in life and destiny on the strength of the level of spiritual illumination that we have it takes more than desire to rise it takes more than intention to rise it takes light ezekiel chapter 2 when you read verse 1 he said son of man stand upon your feet and i will speak unto you and he had no strength he wanted to stand but he had no strength to stand verse 2 says and the spirit entered me when he spake unto me and set me upon my feet hallelujah yesterday at the mainland during my session we took out time to pray please do well to get the teachings And tonight I want to teach on a subject that I think many people have not paid attention to and this has been responsible for the divide as far as um, one group excelling and another group failing wolf in life and in destiny. It is my, my charge and my prayer that we lend our destinies our attention for the few minutes that we have so that we can learn the ways of God conferences like this I would always say are a feast of light when the light of God comes then we are empowered to rise and to thrive I'm teaching tonight on what I title choose life choose life we're examining the power of choices and the power of decisions as far as a glorious destiny is concerned three scriptures and then i'll begin my teaching number one deuteronomy chapter 30 and verse 19 deuteronomy chapter 30 and verse 19 that's what the bible says i call heaven and earth to record this day against you that i have set before you life and death i have set before you blessing and cursing therefore i can't force you but here is my counsel choose life that both you and your seed may live straight up we see that the implication of your choices goes beyond you your seed will be part of your choices it says choose life so that you and your seed may live per adventure you choose death then you and your seed will also die 
Are we together? Scripture number two. Joshua chapter 24. Joshua chapter 24 from verse 13. We're reading 13 to 15. Joshua 24, 13 to 15. And I have given you a land for which ye did not labor, and cities which ye built not. And ye dwell in them of the vineyards and olive yards which ye planted not, do ye eat. 14. It says, Now therefore fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in truth, and put away the gods which your father served on the other side of the flood and in Egypt, and serve ye the Lord. Let's read verse 15, if you can see projected. Ready? One to read. And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom you will serve, whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the flood or the gods of the Amorites. But as for me and my house, have you seen that every time it has to do with destiny choices and decisions, it goes beyond you. It is always you and your house. It is always you and your seed. It says, as for me and my house, this is the decision we will serve the Lord. Last scripture, 1 Kings chapter 18 from verse 19. This was the contest at Mount Carmel with prophet Elijah. Now therefore, he said, send and gather to me all Israel unto Mount Carmel and the prophets of Baal, 450. Please back to 19. And the prophets of the groves, 400, which eat at Jezebel's table, 20 now. So Ahab sent all the children of Israel and gathered the prophets together unto Mount Carmel. Let's read 21 together. One to read. And Elijah came down uh -huh, and said, How long halt ye between two opinions? If the Lord be God, follow him. But if Baal, then follow him. And the people A great and very wise man made a very profound statement and he said your decisions more than your conditions decide the quality of your life your decisions more than your conditions decide the quality of your life you may want to write that down and please pay attention your decisions more than your conditions decide the quality of your life. I think it was Dr. Murdoch who said, decisions decide destiny. That your destiny is at the mercy of the kind and the quality of decisions that you make. Our world is full of divides across um, social status. We have wealthy people we have what we call the middle class we have those we call poor people our world is full of individuals who seem to be icons across different fields of endeavor and then the other side of the pendulum has men and women who are lessons for generations to come old and aged people are full of regrets and stories of wasted years wasted moments wasted there are many people today who continue to live in regret and pain as a result of the wrong or poor choices that they made in fact in our world and in our, our continent even in our nation chances are excellent that when you sit with a very old man and ask him to me Half of the stories will be full of regrets. Regrets of times wasted, opportunities wasted. Hallelujah. And yet the Bible is very clear as to the fact that in Christ, everyone has been called to a life of honor, 
a life of glory, a life of dignity. I think it was Bishop David Oedipo who said, there are no low callings in Christ, that everyone has been called and preordained unto a high calling. But unfortunately, and I pray it does not become our testimony this night, that out of a handful of people, statistically speaking, out of every 10 people, maybe just one or two, actually rise to the fullness of their prophetic potential within their lifetime. Am I doing something wrong? Okay, thank you. Are we together? Yes. Our world is full of people who wake up early in the morning and sleep late in the night. People making no progress whatsoever. As I would always say, the only thing growing in their life is their age. Nothing else. No impact. And I'm glad that this is a church of wisdom. Your pastor and his dear wife, have they, they have helped you understand the human nature from a sociological and a relational standpoint. So you're not in ignorance as to the factors that must be captured in the life of an individual for him or her to find fulfillment. I can tell you there are many people who are just existing, but they are not living. And it is my desire, as instructed by God, to communicate and open our eyes to see that the unit of destiny is time. And that whether you are prepared or not, with every passing time, you may not get it back again. And that it is your decisions that move you forward. Time does not change. Time only reveals. One day ago better is just a sociological cliche that mediocres put around their lives to find consolation. You do not arise and shine because you are tired of sitting. You arise and you shine when your light comes. Are we blessed? My goal, among other things, is to challenge and provoke someone tonight to let you see that your life, as it is right now, in summary, is a product of the kind and the choices and decisions that you have made. And let me tell you the truth. I sat back and I saw such a beautiful prophetic word that came from your man of God, the year of the Lord. Did you know that there are people, regardless the prophetic word that comes, for them, their prophetic word has been the same for the last 10 years. A life or a year of failure. Next year, repeat. Next year, re doesn't matter what prophetic word comes, you see. Because they have not learned that when it has to do with advancement and destiny, that a lot depends on them. And then there is an angle to Christianity that sponsors irresponsibility where people hand over everything to Jesus and just believe you took the risk. I didn't ask you. You died for me. Finish what you started. And then people just hands off and don't take responsibility over their lives and they find out that they move from failure to failure. Someone shout God forbid. Are we learning? So your decisions more than your conditions decide your destiny there are people today who blame the government for their failure there are people who blame parents there are others who blame tribe there are others who blame some sad and negative event that happened i was so inspired by the gentleman who came i don't know his name the gentleman who came dancing here before i came up because i think he ministered yesterday same song and i was so inspired and i said this was someone who was crushed by what a legitimate reason to remain a mediocre. We live in a world where we have mastered the act of attracting sympathy. We, we look for a loophole, something that is legitimate and we cash in on it and expect the whole world to stand still because decisions decide destiny. I wrote here and I want you to pay attention as you listen. 
every choice and every decision in life is connected to a consequence please write it down very very important information every choice and every decision in life is connected to a consequence a consequence means the corresponding outcome in honor to the decision you have taken consequences can be negative or positive are we together you are not given the liberty to choose consequences only your choices have the power to choose consequences you cannot choose consequences you can only make decisions and choices it is the decisions and the choices you make that choose your consequences this already is a word of advice if I know that I do not have the power to choose my consequences, it means before I make any decision and any choice, I find out what consequence is tied to that choice. Is that true? So, if you have the opportunity to engage with the Holy Spirit, He will show you an array of decisions and the corresponding consequences connected to them. This is what we saw in reading that scripture. I set before you life and death. I set before you blessing and cursing. I gave you a will and so I cannot assume that you love life. But here is my counsel. For the sake of you and for the sake of your children, choose life that you may live. Choose life that you may live. I am surprised, very surprised, at so many people who continue to make bad, poor, ill-informed and sometimes demonic decisions and expect that magically their lives continue to veto their decisions and still become an expression of God's desire. There are many of us who have made wrong financial decisions, wrong relational decisions, wrong destiny decisions, and then we continue to wonder why our lives do not become an expression of the grace and the glory of God. And this is a very blessed church. I was commending the woman of God on behalf of her and her husband, telling them how much that the truths that they communicate go beyond the membership of this church to blessing people literally across the body. Are we together? There are many people who have made poor choices as far as their career pursuit is concerned. They made wrong choices and they are now paying for it. Many people who made poor choices, for instance, no financial resources, no jobs, and they were determined to have nine children. Are we together? Now, I'm not, don't feel bad if... if, if if it attempts to describe you but i'm just this is why we're in the house of god nine children seven male two female then you wonder why africa has a very short lifespan it is said that in nigeria the lifespan is 48 years very obvious reason scientific reasons not just demonic reasons because of the kind and the quality of thinking and decisions that come are we together now yes decisions decide destiny there are many corporations while while we drove coming to the church i saw different business outfits some small some literally as if nothing is going on there and then some magnificent buildings and i thought to myself my god all of the people who own these things have the same frame the same brain the same everything the difference the kind and the quality of decisions that they made there are six destiny decisions that any individual who must rise and thrive in life you must be able to pass the test of making these six destiny decisions please i want you to pay attention 
and like the woman of God said with the intention to learn by the way let me define decisions please look up what does it mean to decide because there are many of us what we call decisions are not decisions there is a difference between a wish and a decision a wish is a desire right targeted towards a goal or an outcome in your life a decision is a desire to do something to achieve something that is backed up with the willingness to pay any price under God to see that that desire comes to pass the difference between a wish and decisions is commitment when you add commitment to desire it now becomes a decision so many people continue to wish for a great life others wish for an anoint i wish i would be as anointed as this man i wish i will be rich i wish i would have influence i wish i would study my bible every day i wish that my prayer life will come back to life i wish mere desires desire is important but not sufficient to produce any glorious destiny please you must learn this. the moment there is no commitment factor to desire it remains a week a decision is a desire that is backed up with the determination under God to see that whatever action you will take under God is taken to see that that dream becomes a reality are you seeing that most of the things that happen in our lives are just wishes many of you shop online and um, when you shop online there is something called a wish list have you seen it nobody accuses you for leaving it there you can wish all kinds of things and laugh at yourself while you are dumping those things there I need this dining set, three million. You add it. It's a wish, remember? Remember, it's a wish. It keeps adding and then you watch it and leave it there. And sometimes two years, three years, five years is there. It's called a wish list. But there is another column close to it where they can say, is it check out and pay or pay and check out immediately? You know, you can buy now. And then... You buy now and check out and pay and then the order is ready to get to you. Many people have these psychological and spiritual wish lists. And for many of us, we've had it for decades. Strong desires in our hearts that are not backed up with the willingness to commit ourselves to bring it to pass. And I pray that tonight as we examine these six decisions, may it change our lives forever. Believe me, if you pay attention to what I'm teaching you, you will marvel and wonder at what happens in your life within one month of, of understanding this and applying it. Number one, the first decision that you must make in order to excel in life, to live an uncommon life and an uncommon destiny is the decision to know the Lord and to be exceptional in your spiritual life. Write it down, please. In order of priority, the decision to know the Lord and the decision to be exceptional as far as your spiritual life is concerned. Jeremiah chapter 9 and verse 13. Jeremiah chapter 9 and verse 13. Here's what the prophet said. Jeremiah chapter 9 and verse 13. Did I get that right? Help me. I'm looking for the scripture. Let not the wise man. Is it 12? Check for me, please. Let not the wise man glory in his wisdom. Verse 12. Thank you. No. No. Please search it for me. Huh? Let not the wise man glory in his wisdom. Huh? Beautiful. 
Thus saith the Lord, let not the wise man, look up please, glory in his wisdom. Neither let the mighty man glory in his might. Let not the rich man glory in his riches. Now 24. Let's read together. 1, to read, 24. But let him that glory had glory in this, that he understandeth and knoweth me. Stop there. That the real glory of the believer in this kingdom is that you understand God and you know God. Do you know, we live in a world where if a young man comes and tells you, I'm a graduate, I had first class, but I hate Jesus Christ. I hate anything God, but I'm a serious person. You say, that's all right. At least you are educated. It's just that you are not serious with God. And we sweep it under the carpet. We have downplayed the issue of spirituality and left it to church and pastors. The Bible says, listen carefully that let not the wise man glory in his strength, the rich man and all of that, that him that glories, he should glory in the fact that he knows the Lord. John chapter 17 and verse 3. Jesus is praying and here's what he said. John 17 and verse 3. He says, this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God and Jesus whom thou hast sent. There are many believers who love the fruits of a healthy relationship with Jesus, but are not willing to commit themselves in truth. There are people who have made up their minds that they will not be serious with God. In fact, they frown at anything that drives them into a deeper relationship. The moment you mention fasting, they frown. Prayer, five minutes, they say it's enough. God is not deaf. You see, all these kinds of things are the indices that make for a weak and beggarly spiritual life. And it is dangerous because you raise your children spiritually to honor your conviction of God. If you do not respect God and God does not seem like a big deal to you, it is impossible to raise a mighty man under God being a lazy man spiritually yourself. Are we together? You will only raise your children to reflect your convictions about God. Every armed robber came from a family. Is that true? Every terrorist and every troublemaker disturbing society today came from a family. And respectfully speaking, most of them, the disaster in a nation starts within a region. The disaster within a region starts within a family. The disaster within a family starts within an individual who neglected his role. Chances are excellent that if you do not show your child the way of the Lord, the devil will escort him to another group of careless individuals and they will build that strong momentum and he will begin to grow and evolve until he becomes one who will cause mayhem to society. Every national problem was first a regional problem. Every regional problem was first a community problem. Every community problem was first a family problem. And every family problem, most family problems are traceable to the neglect of someone. The decision to know the Lord and to be serious spiritually. During the pandemic last year, most all churches, I think, there was a compulsory, how many months? Two or three months break. Do you know that two or three months break, there were people who by the time they called back, they needed to dig them from a spiritual hole and bring them out to say, start with God afresh. Because just three months of lack of pastoral assistance plunge many people into a realm that is almost as if they never knew Jesus Christ. Three months. Remember the disciples when they walked with Jesus. We will follow you, they said. Jesus kept looking at them, especially Peter. As soon as Judas came to kiss Jesus, he landed in trouble. You see how they all left? The only person that stood with Jesus at the cross was John the Beloved. Where were all the people who enjoyed his meal? 
the recipients of his miracle, the five loaf and two fish, where were the people he healed? Listen to me. If you want to live a life of excellence spiritually, you must commit yourself to loving the Lord. There are many people who open their Bibles on Sundays and they don't open it again till another Sunday. Prayer, except it is emergency. Otherwise, God, let your message just speak. This is the year that you will make up your mind to be systemic about your spiritual growth. Most of us grew up and saw our parents. Some of them were not filled with the Holy Ghost. They could not pray in tongues, but as soon as they woke up the first thing, their Bibles were at their side. Is that true? You saw that happen, that ritual for over 25 years. It may be 10 minutes of devotion, but they, it did not fail. We must return back and discipline ourselves to take the issue of our spiritual life seriously. When someone is not spiritual as an individual, when he becomes a worker in church, he will transfer his unseriousness spiritually to that department. It's as simple and honest as that. Is that true? If an unserious man meets an unserious woman, even if they are joined in church, they will all take their different versions of spiritual unseriousness. And that, that home will be, it will be a hub for demons and yokes and curses and all kinds of things. And many of us, sincerely speaking, we come from backgrounds not to scare you, but by default, there are already yokes and covenants waiting for your unseriousness to play out. God is, your destiny and that of your children is at the mercy of your spiritual growth. Listen. You run based on what is pursuing you. If a fowl is pursuing you, can a chicken is pursuing me, I can run. But if a lion is pursuing you, there are many of us, you are yet to examine what is really pursuing you. You heard that your grandfather served idols and died. Your grandmother served idols and died. And they said the first male, which is you, should be the person who will be the next priest. Now you said it's not my business. And you see what your life is becoming. It takes high level spirituality to break free in experience from those things. Please take serious what I'm telling you. There are people, there is no explanation to their failure except that there are yokes of darkness that try to tie them down. The decision to be spiritual what happens as a father when your child tells you, I had a dream. I've been seeing dreams of graves. He said, that's all right. It's, I think you are watching a bad movie. You see that? Whereas this child is communicating something. Imagine if Samuel were not spiritual. If Eli were not spiritual. Yes, even though his eyes were getting dim, he was discerning enough. When Samuel came and met him and said, there is, a, there is something happening to me. I'm hearing your voice. He said, uh-huh. You mentor based on your growth. You lead based on your growth. Let me challenge especially the gentlemen in this church and the men in this church. Your family will be a reflection of the level of spiritual dexterity you have or otherwise. No matter what else you have, if it is minus God, you're on your way to disaster. The decision to know God and to be serious spiritually. A woman once reported her husband that he never calls for prayer. They tried in the morning, it didn't work. They tried in the night, it didn't work. But anytime there's trouble, he can call anybody anytime, even in the afternoon, and gather the whole family and say they must pray. I don't know about you, but I am where I am today by the grace and the mercy of God. I would rather lose every other thing but not his presence. We live in a wicked world. When you leave Jesus Christ, you will find out that every other thing you've held on to is transient. Men will leave you in a heartbeat. Systems will leave you in a heartbeat. Your job will throw you out if they have an alternative. You better hold on to that friend that's ticket closer than a brother. Don't let men make Jesus Christ look like an outdated issue in your life. Your phone rings with a Christian song. You quickly off it because you don't want to fall your hand. If all I have is Jesus, 
I've got something more than gold. I will tell it to my world. Jesus is more than gold. If all I have is Jesus, I've got something more than gold. I will tell it to the world. Jesus is more than I truly believe there are people here and outside and those following. You're saying, Apostle, this Jesus thing, bah, I, I want to try. It's not about trying. It's about genuinely submitting yourself to see the value. Listen, if I ask you, sit down here, sir, and I don't tell you why. Even when you are tired, you are not motivated to keep sitting. But if I tell you there is a lion close to you and your safety is to sit down there, your body cannot tell you you are tired. The revelation of what is behind you. The Bible says the name of the Lord is a strong tower. It says the righteous run it to it and they are saved. My dear people, our world is a wicked world. Don't say I'm a celebrity. Everybody loves me. Get into a situation where you need help. That's when you will understand, you will understand the, the, the self-centeredness of men. There is one who can love you just as you are. Jesus. The decision to know God. It means the decision to study your Bible. You get too big to study your Bible or too busy to study your Bible, you're in trouble. It's an attack. Too busy to pray. Too busy to learn the ways of God. Your pastor would teach and the Holy Spirit will tell you, you need to listen to that message. In that message is the security of the next five years of your life. But then the devil occupies us with all kinds of things. Hear me. Except the Lord builds a house, they labor in vain that build it. Except the Lord watches over a city. He said the watchmen watch it but in vain. When I started out in life and ministry, there were people who were running. You would think after one year, they would not give room for ministry again. Sometimes I, I challenged a few of them and I said, calm down. The way you are going about ministry, you will fail. You don't understand. This is how this thing is done. Some of them today, I'm not sure they are even in Christ. Sincerely. You see, Ba, when you walk with God, your life looks deceptively slow. Keep moving with him. God does not rush people. He gives speed. There is a difference between speed and hurry. God builds you for a long time. You will, you will look at yourself using the indices of men and feel stupid for being serious with God. I've been a worker in this church for four years. Lord, it looks like nothing is happening. Yet you did not know that in prophecy 2022 was the year that God will lift you all of a sudden. And this is what people will say, where did he come from? There is nobody who comes from nowhere. Just because you are not there during the time of training does not mean the person was not trained. There are many of you I sense in my spirit that you have committed your heart to serve God. You have served in this church. People have laughed at you. You've even felt stupid serving God. I came here to prophesy to you in the name of the Lord Jesus who sent me. I decree unto you, may this be your season of appearance. Your life will be a testament that it pays to serve Jesus. Please sit down. The decision to know the Lord and the decision to excel spiritually. The first, spe the first index for measuring growth and, and um, a life of meaning from scripture is the health of your spiritual life. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. The health of your spiritual life. Number two. I'm seeing something I saw yesterday while I was preaching at the mainland. I saw yesterday I prophesied it and the Lord is telling me to speak it here too. The Lord told me that there was a, a lady or someone yesterday. Her mother has been praying because of what God showed the mother at birth. 
that that person was going to be a mighty vessel in the hand of the Lord and the Lord is asking me to declare that same word I just saw light and there are people God is going to begin to work on you listen there is a training in the spirit what God is making out of you even you you do not know you think that you are just an ordinary person who is rising but there is a dealing is why God has been exempting you from what others are enjoying help them please in the name of Jesus I decree and declare by the power that raised Christ from the dead by reason of this encounter tonight may the grace for your destiny the grace that has been building you in the secret when no one has seen the grace that has prohibited you when you should travel it says stay when others are moving it says stay you don't even understand where God is going with you I'm interpreting prophecy for you you are not wasting your time there is a making you have decided to walk with God when you walk with God your life is very strange read John 15 Jesus was speaking he said the wind bloweth you can't tell where it's going or where it's coming I don't know one person who has really walked with God and understood everything about the journey it is not the God of the Bible there will be gaps in your walk with God the mission is follow me it will take faith God will not tell you everything and everywhere just follow follow be stupid enough to follow Some of us have gotten here today by the privilege of blind followership. Lord, I don't know where I'm going, but I know that every time my heart is overwhelmed, ah, I will be still and know you, my God. My soul be still and know you, my God. That I will be still My soul be still know you, my God. That, that life from state. You're serving God that is responsible for where you are. Can I tell you this? We live in a society that finds joy in mocking God. They will look at you and say, look at your life. Be honest with yourself. And you stand in front of a mirror and say, God, look what you've made out of my life. You've made misery out of my life. I had a useful life. I had a good job. When I was an unbeliever, I was fine. Now you brought me to this church and all I can say is I'm a worker. Hold on. There is something he's doing. I can tell you, there is something he's doing. When God is done with you, like a trophy, when he lifts you to the nations, if you ever forget this man, Look at the life of the person talking with you. I will be still. See, when God lifts you, there is nothing man can do. You are lifted, you are lifted. It's as simple as that. Hear me. I'm speaking because maybe there is a man of God here in the making. And you are wondering, God, this is our thing. I don't, um, you are asking me to pray. You are asking me to fast. Where are we going? And God says, just continue. What do I do with these prophetic things I'm seeing? Just continue the training. Oh, Esther, continue. There is the palace calling you. But God will not tell you you are going to the palace. He will train you. Some of you, God has refused to tell you where he's taking you so that you will not be distracted. Just focus on the training. But I can assure you that the thoughts that he thinks towards you, they are thought of peace and not of evil to bring you a future and an expected end. My soul be still and know you are God. I will be still and know you please sit down can you imagine that they're just help those under the anointing yes sir yes sir elizabeth do not cry about your lack of pregnancy john is coming john is not an ordinary child john is a unique prophet when you know this let me teach you something people of god 
you would never judge people by what they are going through you do not know the kind of dealing god is submitting them through so you find out someone gets married and no child day one no child two years don't be quick to point fingers you do not know what god is taking away from their life before that child arrives Has God spoken to someone already? You must make up your mind. Don't say I'm in Lagos. I'm busy. Don't say I have five children. In the beginning, God restore that protocol to your life. Not in the beginning, a job. The person talking to you is not stupid. I know that you need resources to move. I know you have children. Hey, anything God does not give you, let no man claim he can give you. Please. One uncle can say, meet me by February and he will die by the end of January. For someone, God is waking you right now. He's saying the way you are ignoring God, you are, you are programming yourself and your children to disaster. Apostle, but I'm a worker. That's not what I'm asking you. I'm not asking you if you're a worker. Many people were close to Jesus. Some made money out of him. Some used him for influence. Only a few were changed by that relationship. Your proximity around where God is does not mean you are transformed. Years ago, the Lord told me something. He said, son, if you will let men see me, there is nothing I will not give you. And I stand before the God of heaven to tell you if there is anything you have seen that is worth giving God glory in the life of this man, it is a product of what God can do when he finds men who give him everything. Everything. You don't give God your money and keep your brain. You give everything. You're my treasure. My priority. Don't be ashamed of your tears. Who can compare to you? For great is the measure of your royalty. Oh, morning star, you truly are. Pastor Mildred, when I started my walk with God, I was not looking for ministry. I was not looking for fame. I didn't even come from a background that would easily give me that kind of result. I loved him with my heart and my all. I would give up ministry a thousand times to maintain that relationship. Apostle nonsense. Preacher nonsense. I love, I love. I love your presence. I love, I love. I love your presence. I love, I love. I love you, Jesus. I love, I love. I'm staying here because God is doing something in the life of someone that after this conference and this night you are going to make up your mind and say that's it that is it that is it it is oh I am ready I am ready to walk with Jesus genuinely whoever told you he will make you a failure whoever told you that when you serve him you will you will sweep the floors of life you don't know him find out from scripture he carried an ordinary lady called Hasdasa and made her queen find out what he made with ordinary people I have made up my mind that my everything belongs to him it is true my charge for you we have six wherever I stop I need to drum this because sincerely for most people this is why you are not excelling we live in a sociological context that makes god look like an interruption to civilization 
Lord, I want to make it. Are you not aware? Huh. When people clap and credit their results to their efforts, other people like us back down and we say, Lord, I will be foolish and stupid to join them lifting my hands. No. My life is a testament of what God can do. Where God can take another person's prayer point and give the one he loves. Learn what I'm sharing with you today. You are a man of God. Yeah, forget about ministry and settle down with God. Businessman is not just by running up and down. Believe me, the person talking to you is not stupid. He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of his wings. Please take God seriously in 2022. Anybody who comes around your life wanting your hand in marriage or wanting anything and is not serious with God, there is nothing to pray about. The prayer is already answered. Are we together? Straight to the point. But I can tell you, if it is the God of heaven, give him your everything and watch what he does with your life. Number two, let's hurry up. The second decision you must make if you want to live an excelling life. Remember what we are discussing, choose life. The first has to do with your spiritual growth, your knowledge of God. The second, what is the second decision you need to make? The decision to contend for a superior belief system. The decision to be transformed in other words. Write it down please. The decision to work on your mind. Immediately you sort the issue of your spiritual life. The next port of call is not your hands, it's your mind. The decision to contend for superior belief systems. Proverbs chapter 23 and verse 7. Proverbs chapter 23 and verse 7. For as he thinketh in his heart, the Bible did not say so he will become. So he is. As he thinketh in his heart, that means your physical reality will inevitably be a report card, an attestation of your level of mental transformation. Now, this is the balance because most times haven't, haven't stressed the issue of godliness and loving God. There is a mistake that is being made in church because we downplay also the place of mental transformation. So we have so many people who love the Lord but continue to make mediocre decisions that reflect that base thinking. You must transit in your mind. Even Jesus, Philippians chapter 2 from verse 5, the Bible says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. He did not just, because he was the son of God, there was a belief system that he had. Your perspectives, your viewpoint, your thinking, you can never rise above and beyond your belief system. Your life will be a messless reflection of your belief system. Mediocrity is a life that comes in honor to a particular belief system. Poverty is the resultant effect of a particular belief system. Failure and lack of influence is it comes in honor. All of the ills that we find come in honor. Here's what the Bible says. That these signs shall follow them that believe. That means I don't need to go into your mind to know what you believe. I look at the sign following you. Because the Bible says the sign will come in honor to what you believe. So if I see failure and poverty and bitterness and anger, they are coming in honor to what you believe. You don't drive them by saying leave me. You change what you believe and they will change. Are we together? You must contend for renewal and transformation. Believers hear me. Scattered in this beautiful hall 
and outside and even following online are people who have come from different parts of this nation and around the world yoruba Igbo, northern and south south and all of that and let me tell you this I i'm sure that your pastors are, are experts in that area and so i'm not even going to delve into it that our mindsets are shaped by the following factors number one culture culture number two your past experiences number three your circle of friends and your influence all of these are shapers of your mindset chances are excellent respectfully speaking that if you came from say a polygamous family you will not be too far from things like jealousy and selfishness and envy imagine that you become a worker in church and a leader in church still carrying that egypt with you you will turn that church to look like the house you are coming from you will first create a party for yourself and fight any other person who is not in your group it doesn't mean you are bad you are a victim of a mental construct that came from your past there are people for instance who have suffered for everything they ever had in life 10 years to finish primary school eight years to finish a four-year course when you teach on favor they look at you and say you are joking let's share the grace you are talking nonsense there if you teach on possibilities they will hear but favor no it has not been captured in my experience the house of god is supposed to be like a threshing floor where you you open up your mindset to to that 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 editing by the spirit of god it says in romans chapter 12 and verse 2 it says and be ye be not conformed to this world but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind many believers are saved but they cannot move past the gate of salvation because their mindsets do not allow for God to use them the way he intends to use. There are many preachers who remain small. And they think their smallness is a reflection of God's inability. Your mindset is like the container that will receive that jar of oil. Remember the story of the, the Shunammite woman? The problem was never the oil. It was that the vessel was small. The prophet gave her counsel. Go and borrow vessel. He said borrow not a few. You don't need to borrow oil. The oil will always look like the vessel carrying it. Let me challenge someone, therefore, that this is the year you will go back to buying books. Buy the truth and sell it not. Buy, there are disciplines you have to give yourself. There are videos you must watch if not your eyes will not see sleep. Discipline yourself. Tear down some negative pictures in your room that continue to spell evil and war and all of those kinds of things. I am very sensitive to atmosphere. There are things you will never find around me because there are multitudes that are depending on the decisions that I take. And it is my responsibility under God to create the atmosphere that makes creativity and growth possible for me. I invest in my atmosphere. Are you learning? You're staying with neighbors that are causing you trouble. At the end of this meeting, we'll release a grace for you to get out of that place and look for a place where you can, you can roll on the floor in peace and serve God. And anybody who comes under your roof and doesn't behave well, send them away in peace. Don't, don't say, well, the, the Bible says, no, 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 God is not stupid. There is a protocol. Don't bring somebody into your house who does not give you peace. The Bible says the Lord himself will give you peace always by all means. There are many believers who continue to trap themselves and they don't create that atmosphere that allows for creativity because they ship all kinds of troublemakers around their lives in the name of relatives, in the name of all kinds of people. You don't have to fight them. Let them go in peace. If you are under my roof, you must serve my God and subscribe to the modus operandi you met. You can't bring your rules into my house. No. Are we learning? The decision to contend for superior beliefs. There are some of you, your businesses should not be at that level. Except that you have not seen further. Because it is as far as your eyes can see that it is given to you. 
not as far as it is available the one your eye sees is what you are you are, you are given make up your mind that this is the year you will expand beyond the limitations of culture beyond the limitations don't say i am from so 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 no if you came from a poor family do not bring a poor family out of you if you came from a weak family do not bring a weak family out of you be the bridge between the old and the new i made up my mind it was a decision that every men mental construct I will need to have to allow me excel at a global level. God has done his part by calling me and anointing me and granting me access to the Holy Spirit. There is the labor dimension of faith as a commitment that you believe in what God has called you to do. If he has anointed me to speak to kings and to nations and to nobles, I must pay the price to build the mental capacity that befits that realm. Don't sit down and just wish and hope and wish and hope and wish and hope and then remain mediocre. No. Make up your mind that you will not be in any atmosphere on this earth and feel ashamed. No. It is a commitment. Businessman, that even if you stand before Bill Gates, you will only be inspired, not intimidated. No. No. The difference between you and anybody you admire is number one, the level and quality of information they have. Number two, the level of relationships that they have that support that mental transition. And then number three, the level of engracing upon them. Everybody you, ad you admire, you can even surpass if you are willing to make the decision to work on your mind. Your mind can go where your body is not yet qualified to go. Your mind does not need a visa. Your mind can travel with the Holy Spirit and tap into infinite possibilities. I was preparing for ministry when I was in one room. Don't wait for anybody to come and invite you and bless you. From where you are, lift up your eyes. You don't need a visa to lift up your eyes. And now, technology has made it easy with the comfort of your phone, you can access materials that expand your thinking. Lay your hands on your head and declare expansion. That this year, my mind expand, expand. You are praying, my mind expand. In the name of Jesus, expand in ministry, expand in business for the sake of his majesty. A small and a mediocre life. I'm not part of you again. I make a decision in the name of Jesus. Not a carnal decision. Not a sensual decision. A spiritual decision. The discipline to submit my mind to knowledge. The discipline to submit my mind to learning. I will learn. I will unlearn. I will relearn. I will learn. I will unlearn. I will relearn. In the name of Jesus. Local champion living. Be far from my life. I am ready to attain a global scale in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Listen to me. You see, if you don't rise to a global scale, you will spend your life in pain and jealousy and comparison. You will never see traffic in the air. There is enough room, no matter how big the plane is. Traffic is only when you are on land. Rise to a level where everyone is a champion. This petty jealousy, petty fighting, petty pointing fingers. There is a realm that you can rise above it. Are you learning? Make that decision today. Apostle, I have only 10,000. You don't need clothes. Go and buy materials. Make up your mind that there is no fake life. Don't fake what can be real. Invest in your mind. I have 10,000, I will not pretend. I know by faith I have everything in Christ. But I will use that 10,000 and buy data and sit down and begin to invest. Lord, I know that the food my mother did not eat in her youth, she will eat it before she sees you. Shalika paru katasia. You buy a notebook and you are writing. And heaven is supervising the things you are doing. Sooner or later, your current level will run away from you. And the new that you are embracing with your transformation will come to you. Can I tell you, success is not what you pursue. Success is what you attract by your becoming. Your becoming is greater than your doing. Learn this. 
business people learn this it is not in doing it is your becoming the people that do know their God they shall be then they shall do our focus is on doing what do I do to prosper no it's what do I become you do from a standpoint of your becoming your mindset is greater than your activity please do not forget this stay and build yourself stay and work on yourself be strict on yourself when you watch people who run the hundred meters dash do you know they don't train them with hundred meters go and ask any coach you can't train somebody to run on 100 meters with 100 meters. You can do 150 or 200. So his mind is already fixed on 150. So that even when he reaches 100, he has to stop himself. The mind says, continue. You were not trained with this small a distance. So stretch yourself. So that even when you have crossed the global scale, your mind is still pushing you. It is when you stand with your contemporaries, you see the excellency of your transformation. Please make up your mind that you will drive shame through diligence. Drive shame far from your life. Number three. Are you learning? Hmm. What is the third decision you must make for an excelling life? Number three. The decision to discover and fulfill your assignment. That is the third destiny decision. That you must make dear the decision to discover and fulfill your assignment let me hurry up so that we conserve time john chapter 4 and verse 34 john 4 and verse 34 jesus said unto them my meat that means my satisfaction comes from doing the will of him that sent me David's Christian Center and to finish his work. Dr. Miles Munro of Blessed Memory will always say that the wealthiest place is not the gold mines in South Africa and Congo, DRC and all of these places, not even the oil mines in Nigeria and the Middle East, that the wealthiest place is the symmetry where dreams were never actualized books that should have been written that were never written and his goal was that he would die empty and even in death he cheated death you must make up your mind that this is the year you will stop living a purposeless life where someone calls you in the morning and says bros what is for today say i'm just sitting down and say can you come and that that's what defines your day Purpose-driven people almost need prayer to sleep because there is something consuming them. There's no distraction. Many of you got into trouble because of idleness. There is a way you can be so busy, even the devil will wait for you. Because your level of focus and determination is such that nothing will bend your focus. Vision gives your life focus. You are busy but not doing many things. Very busy. If you find yourself doing many things, it's a sign that you've not found your place in life. You should be busy but not doing many things. Are you learning? John chapter 9 and verse 4. John chapter 9 and verse 4. Jesus said unto them, He said, I must walk the works of him that sent me while it is day. Look up, please. There is timing to your assignment. Not every time is convenient. Imagine a man who discovers purpose at 80. Chances are excellent that that man may not do so much because the energy, the relationships, his colleagues may have been long dead. So all the things that support his feeling, his assignment are almost not there. The night cometh when no man can walk again. Today we are seated here because Pastor Kingsley and his dear wife found their place in God's agenda. And we are all recipients and beneficiaries of their purposefulness. Make up your mind that you are not going to go and see him without giving out what he put within you to your generation.
it was a decision that I made many years ago and I'm grateful to God that I made that decision Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 7 lo I come in the volume of the book 10 7 Hebrews 10 7 lo I come in the volume of the book as it is written of me to do thy will someone after this after the church conference you should go and start your own retreat your own three-day retreat lock yourself somewhere and flog it out with destiny someone calls you and tell them please call me after three days there's something I need to sort Lord I'm tired of escorting people I'm tired of acting like I know where I'm going because you see your honor is in the discovery of your place a bird does not struggle in the air but if the bird enters sea it will struggle there many of you you are struggling as though God did not call and anoint and bless you because you have not found your place the decision to discover and fulfill your assignment I made up my mind that I was not going to spend my life doing so many things that which God has called me to do, I will do with all my heart. Hallelujah. All my days on earth, I will await the moment that I see you face to face. Nothing in this world can satisfy Jesus, you're the cup that will run dry. Listen, your honor is in your call. Your prosperity is in your call. Your relevance is in your call. Brother, sister, the Spirit of God is speaking to you. This is not just a preacher speaking. You will live your life in jealousy and pain and anger this man was my classmate this one was this so what he was just lucky when you find your place you can celebrate others because there is security in your place when you see people who are always pointing fingers and always speaking negatively to others such well they are gallivanting around the corridors of destiny they have not found them their place when you see others who celebrate people and can appreciate it, it's because they have found security in their place. And let me tell you this. Destiny is like a relay. That means if God desired that I run with my purpose and hand it to this man, and he hands it to this man, that means if I refuse to leave purpose, I'm punishing these people. God is too merciful to allow them suffer for my carelessness. He will put a replacement to do that work. This is what is happening to many people. You can look at someone and say, but this is my assignment. Another person had to take it. Because for every time you delay, there are multitudes suffering. And God loves you, but he loves them too. He will not submit people in pain because you have refused to rise. If I did not rise as a man of God, God loves me but you will have to raise somebody who will bridge it. The refusal to discover and find your place can cost you your bishopric. He said, his bishopric let another take. Ah, God, don't replace me. I'm ever available. Ever available. Whatever you want to do, Lord, you can do through me whatever you want to say lord you can say through me whoever you want to lift lord you can lift do not live the kind of life where you see someone doing what you know this is your assignment when God finds out that you are careless over your assignment he will look for someone who is faithfully doing his and has increased capacity he will honor him and add your assignment to him this is why you find out that some people start 
ministry and life not intending to do certain things but because God searches for available vessels and they are not there he comes to them and say can I add this to you I have seen that your stamina can take this and you say Lord I love you bring it on he will multiply their honor and still grant them that grace someone can start a ministry as an evangelist but the prophet that God desired to raise is careless, not serious. When he should be born again, he's not born again. Filled with the Holy Spirit, he's still arguing about the Holy Spirit. When will you start prophesying to people? God will raise that evangelist who is available. The evangelist is going through the discipline of a prophet. God will add that prophetic to that man. you find out for five years he started with evangelism. But right now he has switched even to the prophetic because God intends for his agenda to advance and if you become an interruption to his agenda believe me he loves you but you will find the replacement this is one thing I know about God when you know you will be serious with God there is nobody who is indispensable no sir no sir don't say God lacks men there are men who don't make the mistake of Elijah to say I'm the only one. There are 7,000 others. David Christian Center, if God has given you the privilege to be a head of department, to lead a unit, do not ever let it get to you that I am the only one. It is just by meritocracy. No, sir. Because God can pick ordinary people and place something on their lives and grant them the grace to excel. Are we learning? Very quickly. The next decision that you have to make is the decision to be healthy and to be physically strong. You will think this is a simple decision till you die. Decision to be healthy and to be physically strong. Many of you who have listened to my teachings, you've heard me make a confession there pastor that a time came during my retreat usually I examined myself against these benchmarks and for three years in a row I found out that the worst performing area in my life was my health I was preaching the gospel healing the sick casting out demons but the Lord began to caution me if you need to live long make sure you pay attention to this body and I made up my mind that every time I see death in the pot, I drive it away. The Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 6 from verse 19 and 20, just write for reference, 1 Corinthians 6, 19 and 20, that your body does not belong to you, he says. Do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost? And he says to glorify God in your body and your spirit, which are God's carelessness over your health is sin it took a lot for that body to arrive remember it took a lot for that body to arrive the moment you are careless with your body just look at a barren woman who is trusting God for the fruit of the womb then you respect the gift of a body that God gave you let me tell you this Based on the law of territory, the only legitimate access you have to this realm is when you have a body. No matter what is, what is fine with your spirit, if there is no body, you cannot function here. So Satan's assignment among the many strategies to destroy you is to cause your body to so deteriorate that your spirit can no longer exist there. Then it will leave. That's why God anointed doctors. That's why God gave the healing anointing. These are all efforts to preserve your body. Make that decision. Don't be careless with your body. Don't be careless with your health. Pay attention to it for the sake of the destinies that depend on you. Why are demon spirits illegal on earth? Because they don't have bodies. Even the Son of God as the Word, when he needed to come into this domain, the Holy Ghost had to walk carefully with a woman. If Mary refused to donate her womb, he would have had to go to another virgin to now talk to her. The same thing Zechariah asked was the same thing Mary asked. God punished Zechariah and left Mary. 
Mary said, how shall these things be? You thought you would now say, okay, you are joking with me. He had to explain. The power of the highest will come on you. And then you will now be pregnant and that which will come from you and all of that. And she now said, be it unto me. That's how Jesus arrived. Every time you are tempted to be careless with your body, think of a family trusting God for the gift of a child. Then you will know that the body is a very expensive thing. If you lose it, another one cannot come. I, science has not perfected transferring spirits from one body to the other. I'm not sure that has been done. That a dead healthy body, they now look for a, 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 an alive person who is almost dying and now transfer the spirits. So I want you to make up your mind that you will be healthy. There are many people, 25, 30, 35, you see them and you say, guess, and people say 51. You say, God, God forbid. How can you say I'm 51? Old, wrinkled, talking, you are not clear, you are not smart, you are not alive. You go for a job interview, they tell you to go out because they suspect you are already. No, no, no. Make up your mind. That in the name of Jesus, I will be healthy. Say it. Say in the name of Jesus. I make a decision that I will be healthy. That I will be healthy. Go and study about it. There are many of you who have heard. Many of you who have heard. Nutritionists, nutritionists, health people, organic people. Go and buy the truth. 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 Expert in that area with results. What is making you? I am you are older than me, but you are looking fresher than me. What is the secret? And he says, Sit down, take notes, and go and do likewise. Please be healthy. Do you know, especially for those of us who are men of God, statistics has shown that most men of God who work in the apostolic, the prophetic, the ministry of signs and wonders, they almost don't cross 80. Because there is something the anointing does to your physical body. You know that? By the time you stand on that, it's like holding a high tension wire for a long time, every day for a long time. Your body, there is a skill to preserving the health of that body under the influence of intense glory. Most of us just keep receiving it. a way of interpreting prosperity just because you suffered growing up you suffered things did not work you knocked on doors they didn't open when there is a psychological revenge mission so you get back and believe by punishing yourself like that you are appeasing your past hallelujah and then some of us, the discipline to see food and leave it. Do you know, listen, do you know gluttony is a spirit? Anything you have must finish before you rest. It's a spirit. You can discipline yourself. Believe me when I tell you this. You can't do much with God and with destiny if you don't have control over food. As great people. Most people hate January because usually most, whether in your prayer group or in a church, there's some kind of fasting. There are people who don't have personal fasts in a month. Ah! In Africa, please repent. Please repent in the name of Jesus. You need strength and capacity. Especially if you're a man of God here, you're a priest, you're a father. The Bible gives us a medical advice that if you don't plan to walk, don't eat. It's an advice. He who does not walk should not eat. It's an advice that the moment you keep piling food without walking, you are dying. So 
So go back home and discipline yourself and trust God for grace. Many Africans are already dead while they walk. We have to trust God to live a long time. I don't know about you, but no devil would take my life before my time. The fullness of my days I will fulfill. Are you in agreement with me? I pray over everyone here at David's Christian Center. The spirits that cut men, cut short their lives and their destinies. May it be far from you in Jesus' name. Please sit down. Let me five minutes and let's finish these decisions and I speak over your life. Number five. What is the fifth decision? If you've been sleeping, wake up. The decision to be financially independent. Uh-huh. The fifth decision that you must make is a commitment that I must, I must sort this issue of lack and want and financial struggles. This is not just bowing down to the flesh. This is not just some carnal pursuit for money. Remember, we are kingdom people. And everything we deal with is with respect to our desire to see Jesus glorified and to see him revealed. Can I tell you this? Dear brothers and sisters, people of God, do not let anyone downplay the necessity of supplies in your actualizing destiny. You reject this truth, you will spend your life paying the price. Proverbs 22 and verse 7. Who would know that this kind of scripture will be in the Bible? Read it with me, please, if you're a Christian. Ready? One, two, read. That the rich rule it over the poor. That means being poor has a dangerous side effect. And it says the borrower is servant to the lender. If you are an intelligent person and you want a servant, how do you make that servant from this scripture? Make the best a borrower. Africa, you see it now? Nigeria, you see it now? That whoever is a borrower must also be a servant. So instead of calling you a servant, I create an economic name and I call you a... Ecclesiastes chapter 9 from verse 13. Don't forget this story for the rest of your life. Ecclesiastes 9 and verse 13. Please look up. This wisdom have I seen also under the sun, and it seemed great unto me. Next verse, please. There was a little city and few men within it. And there came a great king against it and beside it and built great bulwarks against it. Next verse. Please help me read. One, two, read. Now, there was found in it a poor wise man. What a description. And he, by his wisdom, delivered the city. Uh -huh. Yet, no man remembered the same poor man. The story concludes with this. Go back to verse 16 now. Not 13, you took us back. Then said I, read with me now. Wisdom is better than strength. Uh-huh. Nevertheless, the poor man's wisdom is despised and his words are not heard. That a man by his wisdom saved a land and they swept him under a carpet. Economic empowerment is part of the dominion pillars. You cannot truly walk in dominion until there is dominion in terms of finances. Now, there are people who have taught this from a carnal standpoint and they continue to fuel lust in people and make people you lie down on people's cars, lie down on their compound, snap in front of their gates. That's not how to be prosperous. But can I tell you, one of the decisions you must make up your mind to do is to wave poverty goodbye and insist that it waves you back. There are many temptations that are not necessary when God has helped you. Are we in agreement? Yes, sir. Lack and want can drive you to do things you never believed you would do. Believe me. I believe that it is a prayer point in the heart of your man of God and his dear wife to see a church 
every leader who loves God and loves the people given to him among the many things you seek to see captured in their lives and their Christian experience is life of economic dignity a life of economic dignity a life of economic dignity imagine that I came here now and I'm thinking of some bills to pay and all of that and God has given me the prophetic and I can see your account number what do you think is going to happen I will easily yield to that temptation and say, Mister, I'm looking at 100 million. Don't act like it's not there. I will call the account number and tell you, look, just respect yourself. The God who showed me that thing. And God is saying, me, I gave you this as a gift. Prosperity is a weapon. It can shield you from many things. Many things. Many things. And at the end of this service, I'm going to be speaking over your life. That in the name of Jesus this year, even when men say there is a casting down, you will prosper in a way that you want to run away from your testimony. In the name of Jesus Christ. There are so many things that are not prayer points. They just need supplies. One of my, one of my dear sons in the ministry will say that prosperity will reduce your your prayer request and increase your prayer life that means you spend time praying but most of your prayer will be worship and praying in the spirit there are people who go to pray and for six hours they've not started praying in tongues yet because of the way the needs are plenty at the end of it there is no edification because you've strangled the part of prayer that is made for edification at the altar of your needs I made a decision years ago that I will never be poor this is not a carnal man's declaration I have studied poverty carefully and I've seen what it can do to a glorious destiny I don't know if you make up your mind to like it but let me counsel you remember our teaching here is choose life don't hope that you will be blessed you must make that decision this night that I'm tired of this thing. I'm tired of this. The last one, and then we'll pray. What is the last decision? The last decision you must make is the decision to build quality destiny relationships. The decision to build quality destiny relationships. Listen to me. The command be fruitful means be relational. The only way to be fruitful is by relationships. It takes a husband and his wife to have a child. Is that true? Agriculture, biology teaches us that there is no relationship. There is no fruitfulness outside of relationships. There are many currencies that we were given to buy our possibilities in this realm one of the hard currencies is relationships there are seven of them the cheapest and the weakest currency is naira and dollars and pounds if that is the only thing you have in your account to buy things you are really poor i always pray for my people that may you never be so poor that all you have is money can I tell you this? Relationship is profound wealth. In this kingdom, who hates you does not matter. But don't joke with who likes you. Oh king, you love Hadassah, she becomes queen immediately. The king hated the baker. In three days, he died. It was not God that killed him. Who hates you may not be an issue, but who likes you? Listen, this is where many believers do not understand the power of relationships. Our loved ones and the elderly have taught us the power, the economic, spiritual, sociological value of relationships. As I conclude, let me ask you a question. Is there anybody in your life today who thinks you are such a big deal that you can call upon and you can guarantee that the person will respond to you? Is there someone today, if you are in a financial need, you can call him 
and say sincerely this is my house rent and he says over my dead body not when I'm with you can I tell you you are sitting on a time bomb if there is no such person in your life believe me when I tell you dear people of God is there someone who you can wake by 2 a.m. and is not embarrassed he says if it's for you I can go that far many of us keep running alone I have the Holy Ghost yes you are right but you have to understand that the way God works is that all blessings come from God through men to men. Don't forget this. All blessings come from God through men to men. If God says yes and the middleman says no, the yes remains in the realm of the spirit while you suffer on earth. I have learned the value of quality destiny relationships. Nobody in this church under this high level unction should be without quality relationships because your man of God and the woman of God, this is, this is one of the core areas of grace. They've taught you things. Many of you get cheaply what other people pay for to learn. Don't abuse it because it came free. Listen to this word of caution I tell you. I said this to your pastor yesterday. I also said it to the woman of God. Chances are excellent that when something is very available, you can cheapen it. Learn to protect and preserve the wisdom that comes from these people. They are gifts not only to you, but to the body of Christ. Are you, are you following now? Please learn relationships. Relationships are investments. Next time they ask you to list all your investments, don't list land alone. Land does not talk to you. Land cannot love you. Land cannot move from where it is to where trouble is meeting you. But there are men who can move. That there must be someone in your life who says, provided I am alive, your children will never beg for bread. There are people who relationship is a stream of income for them. There are preachers who are alone. Aside from God, there is no human vessel who believes in you enough. No. I love everybody, but I don't commit the same level of energy and vigor to everybody. There are people who have taken out time to invest in my relationship with them, people, families. I would be stupid and even foolish to generalize relationship and invest the same kind of energy. Go back and stratify your relationships. Who are the top five people who have shown you honor in your life? Don't you treat them the same way with everyone? No. I love everybody sincerely. But not everybody means the same thing to me as far as relationship is concerned. There are people who will never see you cry except they are not alive. There are people who will never see you hungry Please, let me tell you this. When you find people in your life who love you to stretch that far, I want you to take note of them and invest into that relationship. It's one of the lessons that I learned having the privilege of access to our fathers of faith in this nation. My goodness, my God. There are a few relationships those people have in their life that are almost magnetic. They, they form me the of their destiny relationships is unbendable there are some of you God forbid if your house gets bought you will sit down outside because there is nobody who loves you enough to say I can't let your children cry you don't have to get everything by working for it yourself relationships are a leverage tap into it there are two keys to relationships among the many that you will learn Number one is honor. You can't dishonor people and expect them to be indefinitely committed to you. No. Honor is the ability to discern, celebrate, and reward people for their uniqueness. Don't trivialize people and expect commitment from them. Don't trivialize your pastor and the woman of God and expect them to continue investing. If you ask your pastor and ask the woman of God, they love everybody you are all their children spiritually and they have been committed to you but let me tell you sincerely 
how you know you are special is when your absence means a lot to the people if your absence does not mean anything it means your presence is not adding much there are people if they don't come to church on sunday more than 50 people will call them what happened you are too significant to be ignored there are others it's after two months somebody will say where is that noisy person who doesn't listen as soon as they say make up your mind that you will be a blessing to someone don't come to church and ignore people or don't wait until you see people who have a a a persona that communicates wealth then you now respect them because you saw the designers you saw the shoes and the watch someone who will be sitting close to you who can buy anything you think about can just be as simple as possible and they say turn to your neighbor and tell your neighbor may god bless you or i need you you don't know that's your job you are supposed to just turn and say i need you and the person will say see me tomorrow but pride for nothing can make you close the remaining 10 years of your life i want to speak over your life listen to me these are truths that have come to you from heaven to change your life the decision to invest in quality relationships write it down who are the 10 most important people in my life that I need to truly commit to you love everybody but who are they who are they who are they? Who are the people that love me sincerely and truthfully? Not just for what they will get. People who will cry with you. There are four kinds of men you will need in your life. Let me take one minute to share this with you. Number one, you need divine connectors. Divine connectors do not have what you are looking for, but they know who has it. You need them. The key to receiving from divine connectors is discernment. Because most times they do not come in a form that is desirable. For instance, the slave girl and Naaman. If Naaman ignored her and said you are a dirty slave girl, he would have remained leprous for the rest of his life. Pay attention to divine connectors. They may look weak. They may look unintelligent. They may not seem to fit your status. But they carry something a road map that can lead you the slave girl could not heal elisha but she could point him to the prophet who could heal him when you enter the bus tomorrow don't laugh at the conductor look at the poster he's holding it may be a business seminar that answers your prayer divine connectors do not even know they are divine connectors number two you need in your life men of influence. They are called gatekeepers. They are the ones who control systems and structures. You need their credibility and you need their endorsement. There are times, oh Joseph, you have the power to interpret the dreams, but you do not have access to the king's palace. You will need to depend on who is already in the palace to speak for you. These are the wisdom keys that believers do not know. Can I tell you this? It matters who speaks good of you at the gates. You must trust God that he positions you. One person's signature can be the leverage that lifts you. Many years ago when I was in Zaria, there was a, a, a very popular story. Someone who wanted to go to um, NDA and they said the person was too short and they could not take him so he went to the then Amir who was alive and reported it and said they refused to take me that they said the height requirement I didn't meet it the Amir said go back to the commandant and tell him the Amir has added your height say relationships that's right is there someone who can walk in partnership with the Holy Ghost to add your height every rule on earth was put by man under a certain condition it can bend there are positive compromises that happen at the instance of relationships number three you need gifted people in your life 
you don't just need loyal people you need results and there are times you need gifted people gifted people there are corporations today who are spending millions of naira and dollars servicing people who are not gifted the best corporations in the world have mastered the art of piecing together gifted people and then number four you need burden bearers the fourth kind of people you need in your life burden bearers do not have the power to move you forward but they are the ones who stop you from going back you need such people woe betide any man and any leader who does not have a burden bearer in the day of adversity when Jesus was on the cross even though so many people ran away there were a few people who stood his mother and John many leaders today die of heart attack they die of neglect and pain because they feel they invested into so many people and at their down times in life there was no one to stand with them pray for these four groups of people every time you are praying that God should connect you to the ministry of men among others these are the four classes of people you should cry for divine connectors men of influence gifted people and burden bearers Jesus would never have gotten to the cross if Joseph um, Simon of Cyrene was not there Jesus would never be buried in a virgin tomb if Joseph of Arimathea did not donate his tomb have you learned something tonight please rise up on your feet Thank you for your patience with me. We're about to wrap up. Pray one prayer. Lord, now that I have heard these things, I obtain the grace. I obtain the grace to make these six quality decisions. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Please pray. I'm about to speak over your life. Pray. Is someone praying for the way of the Lord is the way of wisdom I choose the way of the Lord for the way of the Lord is the way of wisdom I choose the way For the way of the Lord is the way of wisdom. Lord, my life is changing by the power of the decisions that I have learned to make. In the name of Jesus, I will never be small. I am rising from one level of grace to the other. I am rising from one level of victory to the other. One level of results to the other. Is someone praying? You are declaring this over your life. Indeed, this will be the year of the Lord for me. The manifestation of the power and the possibilities that are resident within the Christ. I receive this from God. hallelujah please receive every prophetic word that i declare for you we wrap up let it be from the depth of your heart i pray that everyone here who is down spiritually you started 2022 down in your prayer life down in your word study life your passion and your drive for the things of god in the name of jesus I fan the fires of your spiritual life to flames now in the name of Jesus Christ number two the discipline it takes to stay and acquire superior knowledge that transits you mentally in the name that is above all names may that grace rest upon you now may that grace rest upon you now I'm praying for you that anyone here who has the spirit of death hanging over them, hanging over their families by the blood of the eternal covenant, I decree and declare death is far from you, far from your children. 
far from your family in the name of Jesus Christ let me pray over your finances I know many of you have seen the tides and from the signs that happen from all the economic indices it seems to be that the year may not be a pleasant one but was it not when darkness came upon Egypt that there was light in Goshen I decree and declare by the mystery of exemption the, and the power that raised Christ from the dead may this year be about your most prosperous year by the prophetic I connect you to strategic destiny help us in the name of Jesus I knock on the gates of systems and structures and I command them to open for your sake in the name of Jesus Christ hear me wherever the helpers of your destiny are the men and women anointed by God to hold your hands as you rise to the next level I prophesy that wherever they are in Lagos here or across the 36 states of this nation the continents of Africa wherever they are by prophecy I connect them to you 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 I prayed it in the mainland let me pray it here there is a grace for speed in the name that is above all names where you have been moving slow it looks like you are not making progress by the power that raised Christ from the dead may that grace come upon you to accelerate you may that grace come upon you to accelerate you one year in one month in the name of Jesus Christ hear me whoever has ignored you I call upon my God who is also your God in the name of Jesus Christ I place an unction on your life they will never be able to ignore you again hear me there are many of you here you have been the lifting of many people you were part of their success stories but they've forgotten about you I open the book of remembrance tonight and I decree and declare for your investments in the life of men corporations nations may you be remembered for good in the name of Jesus Christ and finally I end my voice with the man of God and the woman of God to speak over your life that everything that makes for your lifting and your excelling David Christian Center I pray for you the workers the the deacons all who are part of the workforce I decree and declare go from glory to glory to glory in the name of Jesus Christ when men say there is a cast down I speak over you that you will say there is a lifting up in the name of Jesus Christ your wine and your corn and your oil will not famish in the name of Jesus Christ hear me anybody who fights you goes down instantly in the name of Jesus Christ let this be the year that you see the favor of God in unprecedented dimensions in the name of Jesus Christ may the Lord bless you may the Lord increase you in Jesus name Hello, scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, my son, attend to my sins, incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well that you will keep these words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us. Thank you.